Good evening, everybody. Action by thought here. I'm Chris. And let's just get right to it. Here we go with prayer. Lord, we uh, just praise your name today for, uh, for a beautiful day, a beautiful day in the Lord. Thank you for having some, uh, for me, for having some time with talking to the neighbor and uh, discussing you some and just a good witness opportunity. And Lord, I just pray for us all here right now that you will speak through your speaker, Lord. I pray that you will enlighten all of us to what you have for us to learn right now with the scripture and the, the commentary, Lord, and just it needs to be you. It's got to be your words. It's got to be your words spoken. It's got to be your words heard. I pray for receptive ears as well as you gracing my tongue. Uh, I just pray your blessing on this Bible study, Lord. And ask this all for your name, for your honor, and your glory. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. It is okay, folks, to get a little tongue tied on your own your prayers. It's heartfelt, not this. It ain't got to be. Oh, excuse me. It doesn't have to be. Uh, eloquent speaking, because if it did, I couldn't do it. <laughs> and yes, my arm is on the chair. Uh, I believe in doing this real. You heard me talking to my youngest daughter. You didn't see her on the screen, but you heard me talking to her the other day as she walked through the room. Uh, this is real life. That's what it's going to be. But it's also going to be serious about the scripture and us talking about it because it is a serious matter all the time. Any Bible study. Uh, doesn't mean we can't. Anyway, it's also should be enjoyable. It certainly is to me. Today the subject is innocence. I-N-N-O-C-E-N-T-S. Innocent, the little ones. Innocence and the age of accountability. Deuteronomy 139. Moreover, your little ones and your little children, who you say will be victims, who today have no knowledge of good and evil, they shall go in there. To them I will give it, and they shall possess it. That is referring to... Uh, when they are they have no knowledge of good and evil they do not understand they can there's a certain amount for little ones of, of knowing right from wrong don't touch that it's hot don't do this because I said not to don't 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 do 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 we teach them what not to do as well as what to do but we also on the two do part a lot of it is just self-learning okay that didn't work and they do it a different way hopefully eventually but uh, this says good and evil not right from wrong and until they are covered until they understand sin uh, what sin is I think it just started granny there's a common, there is a concern today from a lot of people, and I forgot my microphone again. There is a concern today from a lot of people as to whether their little ones who have died tragically, uh, for however, have whether or not they go, they have gone to heaven or not. Also, so some concern for those who are mentally challenged. So, without me just giving my thoughts to it, which my opinion is irrelevant, let's look at what the Holy Bible says. Let's see what Scripture says. In Deuteronomy that I just read, as well as the Scripture that I'm about to read, tells us, and there will be more Scripture in there, that's just where I've stopped. James 4.17 Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. Pretty plainly stated there. You're not. Uh, nobody will be held accountable of sin until they know 
that it's sin. Now, once you know it, and you do it anyway, it's sin. Uh, just like as we grow as Christians, I went up to be saved at six years old, six-ish. I didn't get saved till I was 22. I've said that in my testimony several, uh, a few times. Um, and as I have grown, and every other Christian, this does not just me, as I have grown, there's been things that, oh wow, that's sin. Hmm, I need to turn away from that. I've been doing that. But when you confess it and you turn away from it and you stop doing it, turn away, submit to God. Uh, he has us covered in Scripture here. Matthew nineteen fourteen. This is red letter, which means it's Jesus' actual words. But Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And instead of going into that one automatically, I'm going to come uh, read the next one. Uh, that was Matthew 19, 14. This is Matthew 18, 2 and 3, which is also a red letter. Then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assured, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will not, by no means enter the king of, kingdom of heaven. Notice that wording. Uh, first off it says let the little children come to me for of such is the kingdom of heaven then 18 2 and 3 assuredly I say to you unless you are converted and become as little children you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven little children don't know up until that age of accountability which I'm going to get to a little bit uh, more direct here in just a second but they don't know completely right from wrong. They, and until that age, and it's, it's, until that time for them, they don't know, uh, they certainly don't know sinful and not. And until they do know, until they've reached the age of accountability, they're not, they're not held accountable. So they are, they will go to heaven. Uh, God covers the little ones that do not understand. God covers the ones who do not understand. There is a very common, and I'll get into the age of accountability right here. There is a co very commonly known term, the age of accountability. As best as I can tell, that term is not in the Holy Bible. But what it means is stated plainly. Then the term is fair enough. All humans are born in, born to a sinful, selfish nature since the first sin of Adam. And because he was put in charge, the sin landed, the responsibility landed on him. Little ones must be taught uh, most, of right, most of right and wrong. I've been talking here. Little ones must be taught most of right and wrong. Although, as any good parents know, there is some amount of innate nature in babies and toddlers of right and wrong. And what I mean is, you watch your toddler, toddlers tend to do things and then turn around and look to see if they got caught or if they got away with it. And one surefire way of knowing it is some of them turn around with a scared look, am I fixed to get in trouble? Some of them turn around with a smirky grin with the same thought, am I fixed to get in trouble or did I get away with it? And that does depend on the toddler's personality. But they wouldn't do that if they didn't have some innate nature from God of right and wrong. But right and wrong, not the sinful part. They don't understand that part yet. They're too young for that. However, right and wrong isn't the same as sinful and not. The term humans made of the age of accountability is a fair phrase, but it isn't referring to how many times the baby has been alive on this earth as it circles the sun. It refers to the spiritual maturity, the godly spiritual maturity, of the child for when the child realizes they need a savior. Parents start teaching right from wrong basically straight from birth in small senses there. It's more of a repetitive thing that the babies will pick up. As their baby grows up, they start learning what the earlier teachings meant, again, some just from repetition. Spiritual growth comes partly from nature itself, from parents 
from church, from people they're around as they grow. That is assuming, so far as the way that sentence goes, that it's a Christian family. Of course, it's, or at the very least, some Christian friends around them. Romans one twenty, uh, so far as the from nature itself, scripture both comes partly from nature itself. Romans one twenty, for since the creation of the world, his invis capital H God, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his God's eternal power, and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now that is actually referring to folks that die before they've had a Bible, before they get a Bible, before they have heard about God, as far as actual a missionary or something, talking to them. But God says that in nature itself, in that stuff, all that that's around us, that God created, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, people innately know because it, God puts himself innately there in their presence for them to know God and then therefore to love God so they have no excuse for not hearing because they can see it and sense it the age of accountability is a spiritual maturity of the mind and heart which is different from person to person it's not a specific age it's not like if they're not saved by six something's wrong it's, it's not that it is when the Holy Spirit starts convicting the young one and they realize that they are a lost sinner. They realize that they need to become saved. They need a Savior. They need to become a saved sinner through God's grace by putting their faith in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And they know that they need to do that by praying and asking Him into their heart to love Jesus. At this point, and very much like I was when I went down at six, they may understand a little more than the knowledge that they need to pray and ask God into their heart. More understanding will come later as they're taught. And again, that's all I knew. I didn't know much about Christianity, but I did know I need to pray, needed to pray. I knew I hadn't prayed, and I needed to do that. As for the mentally challenged, no matter how many years they live, if their mind doesn't or won't mature spiritually when they where they understand about sin then they are always protected by God just as little children because their minds even though their bodies make you know if they get to full grown even though that is there if their mind doesn't go past that because of mentally challenged then God protects them and uh, just as the scripture above, above on the blog anyway, what I read a minute ago, what it states. Now, that's pretty much all I've got for this one, but I will not end a blog or a YouTube video without an invitation, even though it sounds a little funny. There's no platform. I'm not standing up front, nor is there a preacher up front of a congregation. But regardless, if you have a sound mind, and I only say that because I did cover some about uh, mentally challenged, if you are under conviction of the Holy Spirit and you know you need to pray, confess, repent, confess of your sins and repent from them, turn to God and turn to Jesus. Change your ways and you want to invite Jesus into your heart through faith. Here's a prayer to help. Lord, I know I'm a lost sinner. I believe you died on the cross and was raised again the third day for the remission of my sins and all the sins of all humanity. Forgive me of my sins, Lord, I repent. Come live in my heart, dear Lord. I want to live my life for you. Thank you for loving me, Lord, so that I can know love and that I can love you. In Christ's holy name I pray, amen and amen. Now, if you did sincerely, sincerely pray that prayer, congratulations, you are a child of God. You are a Christian. You are saved. All that means the same. I'm very proud of you and proud for you for taking this first step in your Christian walk. You'll have a peace in your heart. If you don't have that, then you still need to talk to the preacher some more and figure out why. I didn't say you wouldn't, depending on your circumstances, you still may be nervous or worried or, or whatever, but you're going to have a peace in your heart. Um, 
You need to find, if you're not in one already, a God-fearing, holy Bible preaching church. Talk to and pray with the preacher, pastor, and he'll be glad to guide you and assist you as you grow in your Christian walk. If you know that you know that you know that you are a Christian, but you've strayed, confess, repent sincerely, and God will honor your sincere heart, and he will forgive you no matter what your circumstance is, no matter what you've done, you have not done anything that God cannot get you from. He can get you from the bottom of the well. He can get you from below the bottom of the well. Of the well. W-E-L-L. Uh, God is a big God. If anybody would like to communicate further, please let your fingers do the talking. Comment on the blog. Comment on the YouTube video, podcast, whatever this thing is. Anybody, any Christian that wants to grow their spiritual knowledge, their relationship with Christ, their spiritual maturity. Pray for the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. Study your Bible, not just read. Study your Bible. Pray, pray, pray. Pray for that, like I said, that enlightenment. Christian council, church attendance, small group Bible studies. The mainest thing, not to discredit any, all of it needs to be, but you're not I, you're not going to learn as much without your own study and pray for that enlightenment that always that does not always happen quickly depends on where you are with things and where God wants you and what enlightenment he wants you to have because you read the same passage today and then next week next month next year you read the same passage again and the holy spirit can enlighten you to some another truth a furthered truth of the scripture it's not contradictory it doesn't change anything it adds to one truth the bible is one truth with many parts that's it's a living word it is awesome you can never be done this out of heaven with studying your bible and if you would like to discuss things more privately then commenting on the blog or the youtube my email address is at the bottom of the blog my email address is in the description of the youtube video I'll be glad to communicate with you. Uh, I will say I'm not a counselor of any sort. I'm just a struggling Christian like every other, looking, praying, studying the Bible for God's will for my life. Uh, there is no better life than letting God tell you what He made you for, what His purpose for you is, regardless of what other things that you may be wanting to do, and you'll be surprised at how things might develop into other things but the only thing I can guarantee you that I can promise you is that God will not God will do good on He will make good on His promises He will follow through on His promises and you will not regret giving your life to Him I've never heard anybody regret being a Christian Christianity is not passive the first, the first words of the Great Commission are therefore, which is pay attention to me, and go. Now, if you would, if you like what you've heard or read, whether if you're reading the blog and the video, like, share, and subscribe. Absolutely comment. Uh, uh, that's part of Bible study. Going back and forth with, with commentary or the talking or, or the whatever discussing things get on the same page get on the God page uh, because getting on the same page with me doesn't mean anything but let's figure out what let's, let's talk about what God says in his word but when you do comment you like you share you subscribe you help the channel you help the channel grow but that helps spread the gospel and that's what it's about folks I love every single one of you in Christ I don't care if you're on the other side of the world and I'll never meet you. Or in another state and I'll never meet you. I still love you in Christ. I want you in heaven with me when we die at that time. But the best part is God loves you. And that's why we would be in heaven together to begin with when we surrender to Christ. God loves you. Until the next one, next time, amigos.